how does a country progress, move forward in this world, in this paradigm, in this at this at this time and in human history, without losing its soul, without compromising its ideals, without compromising its land space, its landscape, its material wealth, its people? How how has that happened? What is Trinidad? Perhaps one of the most beautiful places in the world. It's a land that has bred people from all over the world and to create kind of harmony and a kind of synergy that you won't find. I doubt you can find it in any other part of the world. Over 500 years Columbus came to our lands. He got so much in trouble with the waters of the southern coast that he said, I will promise to name this land that I meet for La Trinity. When Columbus and all of them arrived in 1498 and they arrived here, um, they, met, they met all this green space and there were tribes upon tribes here. This was a, a wayfaring station for the tribes of Latin America. Big countries, they fought over Tobago. Fought, won, lost, and left their influence behind. We have so many influences that would have impacted upon us as a people. Trinidad and Tobago has achieved a great deal since independence in 1962. But our big challenge now is to triumph over the middle income country trap and to make a quantum leap into sustainable development and significant growth. In Trinidad, we've been in the energy sector for 105 years. So we're one of the oldest energy provinces in the world. Energy still accounts for some 80% of our foreign exchange earnings, some 60% of government revenue, and some 38 to 40% of GDP. Behind me is a natural deep water harbor that we have situated here. And this natural deep water harbor allows a lot of the offshore vessels to come in here and be able to supply the offshore rigs. Trinidad is developing as, as the manufacturing capital of, of the Caribbean, or they call it the Sheik of the Caribbean. We are second to none in the world. Our quality, we are ISO certified. We can produce high volumes, low volumes, digital, traditional, flexible, new, high-end equipment. What we have is very cost-effective, efficient um, energy, energy cost. And we also have great free trade agreements with different parts of the world. So we can enter the US and Canada duty-free. We can enter the European Union duty-free. Today manufacturing is sleek. You've seen behind us here robots, robotics. These are all latest Swiss equipment, latest American, German equipment. So we're not using our people no longer to just do repetitive motion, but we use their minds and bodies to be able to really add value to the process. This place really belongs to the wildlife. We have over 150 different species of birds just in Trinidad and Tobago. You speak about economic growth in, in Trinidad and Tobago, but you still have to maintain your rainforest. I think we still have about 38% of our forests remaining. Hey, Rain Ponsamon. Um, this is a reforestation project in St. Anne's. It's called the Fonsamon Community Reforestation Project. And um, what we do here is conservation work. So when people hear the word development, you think about a big high-rise building, massive highways, and so on. But development needs to be something that reflects your people, your soul, your culture. I lived abroad on two different occasions and um, I think we need more people to come back um, in order for Trinidad to continue to develop. So this whole question of soul versus development, and I keep saying it's about people. I think the more of our people who come back, um, the more we're able to manage to have that balance. I really think so. <laughs>
I think it's possible to develop a nation without losing its soul. It's challenging. There's, there's got to be, there, there will be a level of compromise that has to take place. Um, the level of compromise is what I think the policymakers and the politicians and the government and, and the policy making will have to find that mix. What really inspired me to, to come back, to make that firm decision to say, you know what, I'm not going to go into the aerospace industry. What really influenced my decision, and not even just mine, my team's decision to come back home, was to really say that, listen, there's so much opportunity to build things that make a difference within our space. Most people go off and almost become a cog in a wheel, within a bigger wheel. And we wanted to come back home and really do something that would make a difference, build companies, take on challenges that really affect our region to help progress uh, the Caribbean. As sort of as a joke, my sister said to me on Christmas morning, well, you should make a tea company, a former tea company, because you drink so much tea. I read this wonderful book, um, I think it's For All the Tea in China, and it, in that book it was mentioned that um, a Dutch admiral had uh, written down in a log book in 1665 that the combination of tea with rum was delightful. And it was just immediate for me, through this piece of literature that I was reading in an aeroplane, that this would be a spectacular thing. All eyes are on us. And now they're not on us, on us just for soca, just for carnival. Now they're on us for fashion. The soul of a nation is in its creativity because the essence of a human being is in that amazing, unique gift that we have to create. If we do channel it, we take things like a beautiful and rich and, you know, we're very blessed to have the resource of oil, and you take that and you create the steel drum. I really believe human beings have a drive to be creative, gen generally speaking, and um, hence I think we're in a good place to live creative lives and to support creative lives as well. A country like such as Trinidad and Tobago must be concerned about sustainable development. Balancing the demands for economic prosperity and growth on the one hand, with environmental and ecological sensitivity on the other. Nature blesses us with, 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 with a unique uh, environment and we have a responsibility to protect it. But I think in Trinidad and Tobago, we have an advantage that some of the other destinations do not have. Because we are a tourist island in an energy-based economy, it means that we don't necessarily have to do a number of things just to survive. This is actually Antia's treasure trove and all our items are handmade items by ladies here in Tobago using local products. Everything here is totally organic. We try to incorporate um, our local products like sea water, Tobago sea water, sea sand, um, grapes, sea grapes from here in Tobago and we provide employment for ladies here trying to curb on the brain drain as well. We practice agro-tourism here. So we're giving visitors to this island to see tropical agriculture. We try to support the farmers who do vegetables and sell it in the village. So the fishermen are benefiting. When people come on holiday, they always want fresh fish. We're not going backwards. We're using modern technology to promote what we're doing. Our objective is to make businesses smarter at scale. So I'd really like us to begin taking a sort of technological twist to the industries that we have so innate to us. You can have technology do what you want it to do. I think we have used our creativity around creating unique products, using our infusions of, of products unique to Trinidad and Tobago. We've taken a local product like rum, infused it with chocolate and raisins, and really created a very unique product for the international market.
Well, my most recent project is a co-working space for creatives and creative entrepreneurs. All of it is meant to support this, this just sort of uncontrollable uncont amount of creativity that's happening in Trinidad and Tobago. Because the human imagination, notwithstanding the fact that we are an oil and gas economy, is the one truly inexhaustible resource that any country has. We are a very artistic community. We've created a lot of great writers, great painters, photographers. We are venturing now into film. Trinidad loves the movies. We're showing films from Trinidad, from the Caribbean, from the Caribbean's diaspora. And we're getting pretty good numbers, especially the local films. The local films are, are selling out. With the festival as, a, as an example, it's an independent entity um, that has the mandate to show films from the Caribbean and from Trinidad and Tobago, um, to expose filmmakers and industry people uh, to what we have here. So we're not just interested in only showing films, but helping to develop the skills for a very positive and great film industry in this country. Welcome to Shagaramas. We are on the boardwalk. The uniqueness about this project has to do with the combination of interested parties, large-scale investors, medium-sized investors, entrepreneurs, and opportunities for careers for young people to be part of it. It's also for families and friends and for Lyman. So whilst you are looking at a, a project and just thinking construction, it is more than construction. We plotted every single tree. And then we said, how can we design the space and leave that tree right where it is? That is the least interference approach. I think actually there couldn't be a better time to be an entrepreneur wanting to start a business in Trinidad. I think that there is an, an atmosphere that actually encourages um, the development of new ideas and there, there's an infrastructure in place in the country uh, that puts a platform under you, allowing you to do that. A lot of, a lot of us have left careers as professionals. I was an engineer. A few others have left as teachers, as whatever, to pursue Careers as, as musicians, um, artists, <laughs> sausage makers. That's sort of what's the most exciting thing about being from Trinidad and being from an island and being from a developing nation and being from the so-called third world. And this is kind of this like energy in the air, you know, you can kind of do whatever you want. It started off as an aquaculture system that was just supposed to produce um, tilapia fillets for the niche market. I had to find a way to make the company more viable with the concept. So that's what the aquaponic subsystem is. Um, instead of just growing fish, now I'm taking the waste and I'm running it through these tubes and the nutrient from the fish is actually powering the plants. So it's all in a closed circuit so there's no water wastage. This is a sorrel chocolate. So, of course, we make the chocolate from the bean. So, it's, it's all from one estate in South Trinidad. And we really focus on local because, well, firstly, because it was the most obvious thing I thought to do. Not for any heroic um, <laughs> reasons, just that, that it was obvious to me. And also that it's unique. Food is culture and food is, is who we are. It is fun, but it's also very important. And, that's what's sustaining me in this, in, this, in this business, keeping me here, because it is difficult. This work has been in places like Buckingham Palace, the White House, and to know that our carnival is in Buckingham Palace in a, in a different format is just mind-blowing to me. You know, you just push, you just keep on fighting and, and breaking barriers. That's 
that's the contribution that creativity can have. There's the human mind at work. Well, we do juice, Mr. Juice, fruit and vegetable juice bar. And I must say, some customers help us. Your customers will come because of the nature of the business. You name it, and we make it. We have Seamoss, Lindsay, Chana, Chana, which is chickpea. Okay, um, we have a, we call a power punch. I wouldn't do it for free. And uh, at the same time, I'm not uh, overcome by the money. Where you could get some concentrate and mix it up and make a, a big profit at a smaller price because there are people who will go for it. I prefer to stick to this. It makes me feel good knowing that what I'm doing is good. The best punch I've ever had in my life. I swear. Having small systems like this, you get a lot of production in a very small area and almost anyone can set up systems like this where they're producing food for their household um, without having to do a lot of damage to the environment. When you have a mix of crops over here, you have a lot less pests. And um, if a pest takes one thing, there's other things coming along all the time. Next quantum jump also has to be a massive diversification jump, taking into account the role of ports and the role of the ocean, taking into account the traditional knowledge in agriculture and what we can do in terms of food sustainability, taking into account a bigger contribution by tourism, taking into account the role of creative industries not just as creative spirited inputs but as business opportunities with commercial possibilities. So ideas have actually become tangible commodities that can be monetized and I think the realization of that and the fact that um, individual thought, the ability to just be unique in the way that you see something now has great value means that the individual has never been more empowered. Whether someone comes from the diaspora, or whether someone is a foreign investor, or an indigenous creator, it does not really matter. What matters is whether the ultimate result is going to be beneficial to the people and the country of Trinidad and Tobago. Development is moving our people from one stage, one level, to another. And if you move the people, you move the things, you move the infrastructure, you move the economy, you move the everything. We draw inspiration from the, the benchmarks, the, the giants, the shoulders of the giants that we stand on. You know, the CLR James is the Lloyd Best, the, all the leading leaders of the OWTU, all, all those guys, all our great artists in the Roy Clarks, the Peter Minchels, the Earl Lovelaces, um, all, all the visionaries come forward, the, the great, um, you know, the Frank Rampasas and uh, Basotis, um, the, the, the Naipauls and the cynicism, but all kind of, you know, the, all, all these blueprints, um, you know, the Dennis Pantons, all these people had blueprints of ways forward. Oil is going to run out, gas is going to run out, um, and unless we stay ahead uh, and develop economically in other ways, there's going to be nothing left. So, As I say, we don't have a choice. We have to. We have to do something different. The U.S., because of this shale gas revolution, is now looking to build their own plants and export LNG um, outside of, of the U.S. So our, the market has changed really a lot in recent times. So what we've been trying to do in the energy sector is to go further downstream. So there are two real areas that we have focused on. The first area, which would be things like ammonia and methanol, 
And if you go downstream of that, what we've developed is a melamine industry here. And coming out of that product called melamine, we can go further downstream into products like paints. There's nothing wrong with development. However, you can develop in a different way using our natural resources. The possibilities are limitless. I'm doing a, a whole museum so that one day people from all over Trinidad could bring their children and their grandchildren. Understand who you are. Because the world at this time and this universe will not accept mediocrity. It needs to go to a different level. That's how I see it. Yeah. I think it's sort of a natural arc of progression that what would happen first is that there would be this desire to be seen as uh, you know, quickly joining the ranks of the rest of the world, um, dressing the same way, having the same kinds of festivals, um, in a way homogenizing the way that you do things. I am seeing the change in the tide. It's a new generation of people with a different type of confidence who are able to embrace the things that are original here and, and stand on their own in the world and realize actually it's their ticket to global recognition. I think it's for larger companies to look very, very carefully at their managements and their boards and, and then to be bold enough to make the changes and embrace this younger generation of more, of more dynamic and radical thinkers who've also been considerably more exposed and are much more confident. In my mind's eye, I'm, I'm always influenced by what I feel in my core, Where, whether it be love, whether it be what I'm inspired by environment, you know, I'm always influenced in my core by what I feel. And uh, this part of me is, it's, it's always going to be there. And as I begin, these images start forming. And when these images start forming, I let them have a life of their own. I never try to control too much of them as they, they come along, as even materials come along, as interactions come along, that, those are my influences. To play a note, that in itself, to me, does something inside of me that, that takes away a certain kind of aggression. It, it takes me, it makes me become a little more constructive in my thinking. And um, the nature of our music has that in it. Coping with world trends is really going to be a challenge, but it's really not a big challenge for us because we have a lot of coping mechanisms that are inbuilt in, into each one of us. Trinidad and Tobago does not want to take on the characteristics of a country in which the drive for development comes from an authoritarian state. And it is this need to have development and growth and participation and inclusion and equity and prosperity together with a spirit of freedom and together with an appreciation of the fact that culture and creativity are driving forces in the development process is something perhaps the economists might miss. The best thing we can sell is our authentic self as Trinbegonians. The most powerful product we have to, to give to the rest of the world is our Trinbegonianness. Truthfully, honestly, proudly, confidently, and with courage. That's all we have to do.